Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at volcanoes and volcanic hazards. So now we're going to move on to the formation of calderas and this is going to correspond to section 6.10 of your textbook. So to begin with, what is a caldera? Well, a caldera is a style of volcanic eruption associated typically with felsic volcanic rocks. So the caldera itself is an approximately circular depression on the surface of the earth. And we can actually see one in this image right here. We can see the edge of it coming around like so. Now, the edges of your caldera will often be steep. They'll be near vertical. And this is because the edge of the caldera is a fault, and it's a type of fault which is referred to as a normal fault. And normal faults tend to be quite steep in their angle, typically between about 90 and 70 degrees. So the fact that this is a fault helps to explain why the face is so steep. Now, within the caldera, we are going to have build a, a, a build-up of ash deposits and sediment. So obviously the ash deposits are going to be the result of volcanic eruptions, and the sediments are going to be the result of the erosion of these volcanic deposits and the redistribution of that material by either the wind, the rain, or ice. Now, also over in the caldera, we're going to have small hills and mountains, and these are going to represent volcanic domes. And so this is obviously telling us that this is a system that is producing felsic lavas, because we know, of course, that these felsic lavas are the primary cause of the formation of volcanic domes. Now, if we were to take a slice through our caldera along this line marked out here, what would we see? Well, the caldera itself would look something like this. So you can see that we have essentially a drop in topography as we head down into the center of our caldera, and then we come back up on the other side. So if we were to come across, we would see a steady drop in the topography of our caldera, then it would level, and then we would come back up on the other side. And that's exactly what we see here. So within our caldera, we have a sequence of uh, pre-caldera sedimentary rocks, which are marked out here in blues, yellows and greys. So these were rocks that were here before the caldera formed. Now the formation of the caldera has caused this block of crust to drop down relative to the surrounding land. And this has been done through the use of normal faults. So each one of these thick black lines here represents a normal fault and we can see which way the blocks of rock are moving. So if we look at the blue layer, we can see as we come across, the blue layer is there, and then all of a sudden it drops down to there. So we know that this block of rock here has clearly dropped down relative to this block of rock. As we keep going, we can see the blue layer finishes here, and then it starts again here. So we know that this block has clearly dropped down relative to this block. So what you can see is we have several blocks of rock which are dropping down relative to the block next to them, and this ends up producing a depression. So we end up forming our caldera, our approximately circular depression on the surface of the Earth. Now, within our depression, we are going to have the formation of volcanic domes. And these volcanic domes, as we know, are going to produce uh, quite large amounts of plastic, uh, so should I say of pyroclastic material, uh, during their eruptions and during their destruction. And so this, vo this pyroclastic material is going to build up inside the depression, so it's going to build up inside the caldera. Now, at the same time, as I discussed, we're also going to have the processes of erosion taking place. So we're going to have the action of the wind, the rain or ice, helping to erode and redistribute material which was part of these volcanic deposits. In terms of the domes themselves, typically the dikes that feed the domes at the surface will often exploit pre-existing faults. And we can see there must be a fault here because we can see that this block of rock over here on the left has dropped down relative to this block of ro rock to its right. So we know there must have been a fault plane there and that fault plane was exploited by the, mag by the lava as it moved towards the surface. So calderas are relatively straightforward things to uh, understand. So the next question is, is, well, how do we end up forming them? Well, Stage one is essentially we have a buildup of felsic magma in the subsurface. So we have the formation of a magma chamber. And now this is felsic magma. So this is going to be created by the melting of continental crust. 
So we have the felsic magma begin to build up. It forms its magma chamber and you can see that it begins to cause the crust above it to dome up because of course this magma is buoyant, it's hot, it wants to rise, but it can't because these layers of rock above it are stopping it. And so what does it do? Well, it simply causes the layers of rock above it to dome upwards. Now, over time, this doming is eventually going to get to the point where it stresses the rock too much and the rock will begin to fail. It will begin to it will begin to form cracks, so joints, and it will also begin to fault. And as we know by now, joints and faults are the perfect conduits for magma to move along. And so that is exactly what it will do. So by stage two, we've built up quite a substantial magma chamber of felsic magma, and we can begin to see the formation of these joints and faults associated with the domed rock above it becoming overstressed and failing. And so naturally the magma begins to rise up along these joints and faults and it will begin to be extruded onto the surface of the earth. Now in stage three you can see that everything is in full swing. So we now have huge amounts of uh, magma being pumped out onto the surface of the earth in the form of lava and this is going to form numerous volcanic domes at the surface. Now the most important thing about stage 3 is that the amount of magma being pushed out is greater than the amount of new magma coming in. And so this means we have a net loss. So our magma chamber is beginning to get smaller and smaller as more and more lava gets pumped out onto the surface. So what does that mean? Well, as our magma chamber starts getting smaller, it means that these blocks of rock here must drop down to fill the empty space created. And this is what leads to the formation of our caldera. So the caldera has simply been formed in response to these blocks of rock here dropping down as the magma chamber gets smaller. And you'll notice though that underneath our caldera we do still have a little bit of magma and so some of this magma will still work its way towards the surface and it will feed volcanic domes within the caldera itself. These volcanic domes will create pyroclastic, sediment, uh, pyroclastic deposits which will help to fill in the caldera and then of course these uh, pyroclastic deposits will be reworked through uh, weathering processes uh, to form sediments. So what type of features do we tend to see associated with caldera eruptions? Well, we'll typically see three main types of rock. So as we can see, the layer of rock which we'll get at the bottom of our sequence will often be a granite. And this represents the magma chamber itself. So I'm just gonna go back to the previous slide. So the granite is going to represent this material down here, okay? Now, above the granite, we're going to have a sequence of pyroclastic rock. So we're going to have some extrusive igneous rocks present. So we're going to have above the granite, we're going to have welded tuff. And of course, this is going to be created during the uh, most volcanic phase of the caldera formation. So we're going to have all these domes on the surface. They're going to be producing large amounts of ash. And of course, as we know, this ash is going to get thrown up into the air and it's going to settle out into the, into the caldera itself. We also know that because the ash is going to still be semi-solid when it lands on the ground, these layers of ash will be able to be compacted, and this will lead to the formation of a compacted ash-based uh, igneous rock, which we refer to as a welded tuff. Now, above the welded tuff, we are going to have a layer of material which was not under sufficient pressure to become welded. So these are going to simply be the ash deposits and the reworked ash deposits. So we're going to have ash rich, ash rich sedimentary rocks. And so this is going to be the material that was, so the ash is going to be material that was thrown up during the explosive portion of the uh, volcanic eruptions related to the domes. Of course, that material goes up into the atmosphere, it falls down, it settles out to form a layer, but that layer did not have sufficient weight on it to become welded. So it's essentially a, a loosely compacted ash layer. So it's going to naturally be very, very weak. Now then over time, of course, once it's exposed to the atmosphere, this ash layer will be actively eroded through the processes uh, uh, due to uh, water, air or ice. And of course, this is going to create an ash rich sediment, which will then be redistributed within the crater. All right, uh, that's it, everybody. Thank you for watching and have a good day.